iPods, specifically fifth gen iPods or 5.5 gen iPods. These are my favorite generation of iPod. The fifth gen was the very first generation to allow video playback. That makes these some of the most feature rich iPods that you can get. Not to mention that they're favored by the community so they have the widest aftermarket of almost any other model. So with all that in mind, a lot of people are picking these up as their only iPod. <clears throat> as you can see, I, I didn't really follow that piece of advice, but anyway. So does that mean that these are the best iPod? Well, I mean, nothing's really the best. It depends on what you want to use it for. But today I'm not here to go over all the different models and their pros and cons and which one you should pick. Today I'm here to just simply tell you how you can take one of these 5.5s and put video on them. Believe it or not, it's not as simple as just dragging on your video and Bob's your uncle. You're gonna to have to re-encode videos to be compatible with these guys. Now hold on, this guide should make it nice and simple and easy for you. There are lots of pitfalls that can make a video not play back as well on these as it possibly could. So for example, so the very first thing I wanna show you is how videos appear on the iPod. So let's go take a look at something like, sure, The Matrix. So as you can see, these two iPods are displaying these movies really differently. This one's been stretched to take up the entire resolution of the display, but obviously with that stretching comes some, well, stretching. On this guy, it's running in a one-to-one -one pixel aspect ratio, meaning that it looks proper, but a lot of the screen real estate isn't being used. Hello, welcome to my desktop. So from here, I'm gonna show you the rest of the process. So we're gonna need handbrake. Handbrake is a free utility to basically encode video. Oh, it's trying to recover things from my queue. We don't care. So I use a specific older version of Handbrake. I'm gonna link it down in the description below to make it easier for you guys. But I really recommend this version just cause the interface is a lot simpler um, and more of the options that you require are just easier to access. You might be able to make this work with newer versions, but for simplicity's sake, I'm using this specific version and I recommend that you do too. So, with that all said, we're gonna need a video file that we wanna encode for our iPod. All right, so as you can see here, we have a bunch of videos to choose from. Some of these are things I've already encoded and some of them are, you know, regular videos that I got from a 100% legitimate source. So, from there, let's take our video, we'll choose American Psycho, why not? It's gonna load the title and drop in a bunch of information about what it's gonna try to do to encode it. Most of this info is wrong. As you can see, it's using a preset here, fast 1080p 30. That's not what we want. We want something that's gonna be compatible with the iPod. So I've made a custom preset, I'll also link this, but it doesn't retain every setting that most importantly, things like the resolution. So even if you download this template, you're still gonna need to follow along and view what I've done to make it work properly. So summary is just going to basically include you know, the only option we care about here is iPod 5G support. We want that on, but that's about it for here. Dimensions. Now this is the next important thing. You have to unfortunately remember that the iPod video has a screen resolution of 340, sorry, 320 huh, by 240. 320 by 240. You have a choice. You can keep the aspect ratio and then simply input your width of 320. And as you can see, that'll make the height of the video 134. This will give this result. Now, if you wanted to instead take up the entire screen, you want to turn off keep aspect ratio and make it the rest of the screen width, in that case, 240. So you're going to have to turn off keep aspect ratio and then set the height to 240. So let's say we want to do that, no problem. Next thing we want to do is set our modules to two and change cropping from automatic to custom, or if you use the preset, that should already be done for you. Next, filters, nothing to change in here, leave everything off. All right, video. So from here, we have to make sure that we're using the H.264 codec, or X.264, frame rate of 30. You can choose between peak or constant. I don't find it makes a difference, but I leave it at constant. Constant quality. So you can choose bit rate if you're a big brain. I don't know what the max bit rate is for an iPod, so I just set constant quality to 16. It looks amazing. I mean, these are basically 4K Blu-rays that are being, you know, squished down into 320 by 240. So they're gonna look good pretty much no matter how you encode them. But yeah, I set it to 16. You can set it to whatever you want between 20 and 
I don't know, placebo, I guess, but it takes longer the higher the quality is or the lower the quality number is. Lower, lower number, better quality. Okay, with that out of the way, there's other things you can do to the encoder to adjust its efficiency and how good it actually does its job. So I set it to slower. Um, basically, encoding efficiency goes down the lower or the slower you set the encoder to be, but the file size also goes down with it. So it'll take longer to encode your videos, but they'll be smaller, not by huge amounts, but smaller. So I set it to slower because I got nothing better to do. Um, encoder tune, none. Fast to code, no. Baseline is what you want your profile set to. And then encoder level, 1.3 seems to be compatible. Again, you can play around in here, but if the encoder level isn't correct, then it might not work. So 1.3 does work. That's what I use. Next, audio. So this is, this is a tougher one. So there's conflicting information on the internet about what the iPod supports. I have had it work where instead of doing a re-encode, I simply do an AAC pass-through, and that generally produces the best results, but it doesn't work every time. So if you have to do a re-encode of the audio track, do AAC, change it from bitrate to quality, set the quality to 10, and set it to stereo. These are gonna be, this is gonna be the best overall result. It's It, it still doesn't sound as good as I've heard from doing a pass-through, but sometimes pass-through doesn't work. I assume if that that's because sometimes the mix down isn't to stereo, it's multi-channel, 5.1, whatever. And um, I don't know, I, I really don't know. But for whatever reason, if you can't get an AAC pass-through to work, do AAC and then change to quality instead of bitrate and then set the quality to 10 and then change the mix down to stereo. That tends to be the best option. It's still not perfect quality, but it's the best I've been able to muster. Subtitles, the iPod doesn't support it. So if there are any subtitle tracks, you can get rid of them. Uh, I don't know if it makes a difference if you leave them there, but they don't work anyway. So you might as well clear them. Chapters. Again, the iPod doesn't support chapters, so just turn off create chapter markers and you should be good. All right, so with all this done, you next just need to tell it where to save it and what to name it. So we'd go into iPod video here. We'd call it something like, well, I already have an American Psycho iPod 5G. We're not gonna re-encode it. We're gonna just say test. There you go. Okay, save. So now it has a destination for that file. And then if you had multiple videos, you can add it to queue. Now, what does that do? That puts it in its own little menu here where it will queue up all of your encodes. So you can basically set this up for every single video you want to put on your iPod and then just start one big long queue and it'll start to encode it. Now, this does take a long time. There is your encode pass bar. It'll basically tell you, you know, when each encode is done. And the time remaining is uh, about, you know, 30 minutes for a video. Now, this jumps all over the place. It isn't exactly perfect, but you can see that progress and that frame rate that it's encoding at. Uh, it's not great. It's gonna take a while. Now again, part of that is because of the quality settings I set here. Um, I'm willing to sacrifice time for that. Now, if you're not and you just wanna sort of bang out all these videos, I would say bring it down to 18 or 20. Um, you know, you might see a little bit of blocking artifact if you do that, if you do that but it probably still won't be that bad. Again, we're squish squishing giant videos into, into a really, really small resolution, so most of your quality is gonna come from that process alone. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much it. That's all there really is to using Handbrake. So I'm gonna link that specific version down below. Uh, it's available for Windows, Mac OS, I'm pretty sure Linux as well. So whatever system you're on, you should be able to do an encode with Handbrake and you know get all your video onto your iPod. So yeah, that's pretty much it for this one. Thanks for watching and uh, I hope you learned something.